Los Collegiate Soccer with five victories over nationally ranked sides. A week ago, the Dogs put on a clinic, dumping UCLA 3-1 to one to take the trophy at the Nike Husky Classic. That was Seattle. This is Corvallis. League play begins today in the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation, Washington and Oregon State, next on Prime Sports. This is Lorenz Field at Patrick Wayne Valley Stadium on the campus of Oregon State University. And this is Mountain Pacific Sports Federation men's soccer, the number two ranked Washington Huskies taking on the Oregon State Beavers. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Akamian along with Paul Swangard. And yes, we said the number two rated Huskies. Washington creating quite a stir this year in men's collegiate soccer. Are they really that good? It sounds like they are. They've beat some quality opponents, several ranked teams among their victims on this eight game winning streak that uh, began after their first loss of the season. To open the season, they look for their ninth straight today as they open league play. We knew Washington would be good in the middle of the field with the likes of Ian Russell, Jason Boyce, a couple of juniors, but it's been newcomers who have been pleasant surprises. Joey Franchino and a true freshman out of Bellevue. His name is Reese Bettinger. Always nice when you get those recruits to contribute right away. How about this contribution to this date? Seven goals and an assist. You count him a bull forward because he's always bowling his way up into the opposing defense, in this case off a throw-in. Get his head on the ball. In this case, the ball goes into the back of the net for another tally. Seven goals on the season. Oregon State was just one game away from going to the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation playoff a year ago. The game that cost them that chance, it was against Washington. This is a great rivalry. The Beavers get some outstanding play out of their middle, and they're going to load up a little more today. Watch for Freddie Kumernis to play even further forward. Yeah, Freddie mostly known as a playmaker, as an assist man, but the guy is going to try to get more offensive-minded, get his foot on the ball that goes into the net. The two goals he's had this season, two game-winning goals. We hope to see more of that this afternoon unfolds. Interesting matchup of the goalkeepers. Bill May, the Washington goalkeeper, has gotten plenty of support this year. He hasn't faced that many shots in the Huskies' eight-game winning streak. But the good news is, is when he does face those shots, he doesn't let them go in the net. He's got a goals against average at .68 this year. On the other side of the field, it's Olin Glenn been sharing the workload with Colin McMillan of Oregon State. But Olin's the hot goaltender. He started three of the last four. We'll see him again this afternoon. Oregon State has never beaten Washington, but all the games have been very close. We'll get it started right after this timeout. Set to go from Lorenz Field, Oregon State's brand new soccer stadium just opened up this fall. A wonderful facility, full size competition field, nice sand base under this grass. Perfect facility for the college game. The all time series going back to when the Oregon State just had a club team and was facing the Huskies. UW has won them all, but they've all been close since the Beavers had the full varsity program. Never more than a two-goal margin. Last year, two to one the final. Let's look at the Husky starting lineups. Up front, Russell, Boyce, and Bettinger. Look out for this trio. They're all capable. Franchino, dangerous out of the midfield. Annis, wide-ranging player, and they like to go big across the back. Fredo and McCarty, solid. Two players in the middle. They do not have a marking back. They take turns. Trading off on hot attackers. There's Billy May. Had one of the easiest jobs in the country this year, playing in front of this defense. Take a look at Oregon State's lineup now. And again, a little different look up front for the Beavers. They're trying to create more offense. J.P. Capadano getting the start because Dominic Conti suspended with a red card. Josh Dodson joins him. Big midfield. Kumernis, Date, and Grome all playing in the middle. That's a lot of creative ability here. And then in the back, filling in the gap. Jer Dodson, Eric Wooten, and Jeff Barry making up the rest of the Beaver starting defenders. The man in the goal, there's Olin Glenn, senior out of Bend, Oregon. Mountain View High School, originally from Park City, Utah. And we are set to play soccer. The Beavers are in the home white, trimmed in white and red. There's Jim Conway, only coach Oregon State men's soccer has ever had. Now in his ninth season, 84 career wins. We're set to go. Beavers in the white Red, Washington in the purple and white. Washington, again, a very aggressive team offensively. The Beavers instantly try to keep them in their own end. There's Scott Schoen playing up. 
with Josh Dotson and a quick throw in for Oregon State. Well, Oregon State would just love to jump on the Huskies early, take every opportunity they can get. Here they'll get one right off the bat. The Beavers are six and four. Wins over Concordia, Gonzaga, Nevada, Las Vegas, Whitworth, San Jose State. We've beaten the Zags twice in the year. That was their last game here earlier in the week. Three to two in overtime. A thriller. Long throw comes all the way to the keeper, Bill May. So May has to do a little work early on in this one. He will boom this one. He was trying to win it. Here Dodson, though, can't get to it, but OSU wins it away, and Coomerness instantly tries to start it again. On with Simon Date. Better cross. We got two Dodsons playing. Josh is number 20. He plays up. Jer is number 11. He plays in the back. He's in the middle, in fact, of the defense. On the run for Washington. A direction change for Morgan McCoy. I think he used his arm there to try to keep possession of the ball. It's a stop and play, and Oregon State puts it back into play, but loses it directly. Be interesting to see how Washington is able to use the open space. This is a team just does a tremendous job of keeping people spread out and using that space to their advantage. You see it here, running to the open space. Man open, sent it across is Ian Russell, but it goes over the fence, out of the field, and we'll put a new ball in play. And you know, the Huskies don't play on a full-size field. They play on a 110 by 70 field, so they don't always have, they actually probably like the opportunity to play on a bigger uh, side like this. Okay, coming up for Olin Glenn. We are just underway with Washington and Oregon State. Yeah, the Beavers really battling for those balls in the air. You saw Simon Date skying going up against Chris Wool. He's in the center of the midfield. All stolen away for the Beavers. There's Sven Grom, the other half of the loop to piss connection. The outstanding freshman who was in the heart of the defense early in the season. Now they moved him up to the midfield. You see how far up number three is playing. Husky started up the side. Nice touch, voice. Number 11, puts it out, looking back for him in the middle. Yes, yes. Uh, good job. Good job. Benger fell down. This grass is a little slippery. It hasn't rained for a couple of days. But this grass has a little bit of a sheen on it. Ball, you see ball skin. There's Coomer, it's open but offside. Very close play, Washington appealing to the side judge on the far side of the field for the offside, and a little bit of a delayed whistle. Hermanus was just kind of hanging out there. He slipped behind the defense. Boy's getting a whole fistful of jersey there. Let's take a look again. You'll see Freddie. Runs a crossing the pattern. Dotson. There he is. Dotson waits. There's no one. Everybody follows the ball. And it'll pop out wide. Very close. And Freddie really got stuck. He was trying to sneak in backside there. And Freddie goes ahead and shoots the ball and tells Bill, I'll be sending more of those way next uh, next time I'm down the field. All right, first corner kick coming up now for Washington. And boy, here is the thrill coming out of the corner. Jason Boyce, player of the week earlier this year in the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation. Junior out of Newport Beach, California. Been on the uh, Team USA U18 squad. Kid so quoted built. in USA Today this week. And built like a fullback. Watch his throwing. He could really put the ball in. Here's his corner. He's not that play. A bunch of left footers on the Sussex squad, which gives you all kinds of things. Beavers take it away. Push it ahead. OSU liking the run. Josh Dotson on the right. Looking for some help. Dotson, nice ball to the middle. There's Kylie Couch. Double team. Ball rolls free, and May will pick it up. Couch trying to slip the defense. Going outside. Ran out of room. Two defenders there. Ball comes back to the house. Josh Dotson, six goals, three assists. In the top five in scoring in the MPSF right now. This is the first weekend of league play. Boy, your whole season boils down to just four or five games to determine the playoff spot. Now, the Huskies, obviously, an excellent position for an at-large berth in the NCAA tournament, no matter what they do. But for the Huskies and Beavers now, with only five teams in the Mountain Division, 
That means you got four lead games that decide your whole season. So that's obviously to the Beavers' benefit because they've had a chance to warm up. And this big game at home. They'll go on the road to Cal and Stanford, then they'll be home against Sacramento State in the final division game. The Huskies also have to travel to the Bay Area and they'll also get to host Sacramento. So the Huskies kind of have the bad luck of a draw. Three of their four division games on the road. I think things will take care of themselves for the Dogs. No matter what happens in the state game. Dodson taking a bump from Jeff Berry. Or Boyce, I should say. Boyce, a couple of words for our referee. Kuhlman is trying to keep him in play, but the Huskies will play. Again, you see the Huskies play four at the back, and this is truly a zone defense, and this requires a lot of communication to pull off. We shot Josh Johnson on that last ball that went up in the air, just kind of lost it, and we've got the sun shining very brightly here this afternoon. As the guy's looking back towards the Oregon State goal right now, sometimes you simply lose that ball in the sunlight. And that October sun a little lower in the sky, and it does get right in your eyes. Well, the couch got back, trying to uh, run the ball down, and here comes the throne, and here's Aaron, here's gonna be uh, Boyce, we talked about his throw-in. You saw in our highlight at the beginning of the header goal by Bettinger, and that long throw came from Boyce. There he is, put it in the box, in the danger zone, and Olin Glenn gets up to make the grab. Right idea for Glenn, come at the ball, don't let the ball come to him. Takes a couple of guys out on the way, but again, look at the impressive throw-in by Boyce, makes that throw-in a whole different offensive attack for the Huskies. Beavers have a couple of big boys in the gold. Glenn at six foot, and Colin McMillan, a sophomore, at six one. Couch trying to start it ahead for Kuminis. And the play by McCarty stops things. Again, McCarty and Prudeau, the heart of that defense. Chad McCarty out of Clovis, California. Fresno area, big soccer country down there. And the throw coming up from Simon Date, the Beaver co-captain. Senior from England, who seems to have been here forever because he's played ever since his first year. Dodson, and somebody on it. A nice follow-up by Scott Shaw, but it's wide right. Now Jim Conway has to like this early on. The Beavers getting some opportunities in close within 20 yards. And the Huskies kind of talking to each other now, saying, why did that ball stay in the area that long? Should have been cleared out the first time. Never happened. And they're talking to each other right now. He kind of lays out in front. A little bit of a deflection there. Defender there can't clear it. Shown fires wide. Another good opportunity for the Beavers, who are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the number two-ranked team in the country right now. Again, these teams have played seven times. We showed you the whole series of 16 games, but they played seven times since men's soccer became a full varsity sport at Oregon State. And they've all been ties or one goal games, except for a three to one. Game. So these have been very entertaining close games. And, and, that, and a lot of that was when OSU was a much more defensive minded team. Now with the play in the midfield, Kuminis, Rome. That much more interesting. Dayton wins it the header, plays it ahead from the left. Nice ball to the center, diving header attempt by Capadano. Just misses, and a goal kick coming up. Boy, J.P. Capadano loves to leave his feet. And he almost had a spectacular header on a nice ball by Date, crossing from the left. Date showing some English speed here, just simply wins the battle to the ball in a very tough cross on the run. Ball bounced one way, Capadano bounced the other. Unfortunately, it didn't meet at the right spot, but another great opportunity for the Beavers here early. Capitano, just a sophomore, played a bit as a freshman last year. And again, really trying to fill the shoes of Dominic Conti, the Beavers' leading goal scorer, or one of the two leading goal scorers, who has a red card and five yellows, so he's having to sit out two games, and he gets another yellow card, he'll have to sit out again. But he's on the bench, eager to be out there for this game, to be sure. A lot of action early on. Oregon State and Washington. Great matchup, and these are certainly the two favorites in the Mountain Division this year. The MPSF got a little smaller this year with the departure of all the white schools. Couch in a collision with Ian Russell. That'll be a theater ball. 
The MPSF was rather large the last oh, yeah. couple of years, but the WAC schools have uh, formed their own league. Let's take a look at this collision again. Russell going hard with Couch. And Couch comes in at the end, and it looks like uh, Russell took the bad end of that one, landing on his back. No harm, no foul. Oregon State will put it back into play with Bates throwing it back to Glenn. Glenn changes direction. The Beavers have some room on the right side. Throw out to Jeff Barry. Barry just getting a uh, few starts this year, but he's really earning some time in the back. Traditionally, victory, but he's playing back a bit more now. Game all being played in Oregon State's end of the field the last couple of minutes. See how the Husky defensive line, where they've really pulled up their back line. A whistle on Dake. Sit up Russell there, and the result is a free kick. Good 40 yards out, but still a dangerous play. Franchino, there's Joey in action. He was player of the week this past week, MVP of the Husky Classic. Joey Franchino, a transfer from Fullerton. Franchino uh, well, could be an interesting uh, statistical anomaly. He's already made all Mountain Pacific Sports Federation at Fullerton, and he may get to do it at his second school in the same league. We'll take a break. No score early between the Dogs and the Beeves. Prime Sports. Come What's important to America's families? My pension uh, is very important because it will provide a significant amount of my income when I retire. And where do the candidates stand? Congressman Jim Bunn voted to make it easier for corporations to raid employee pension funds. Darlene Hooley opposes that plan. She supports new safeguards to protect employee pension funds. When it comes to your pension, there is a difference. Call and find out. In keeping with our commitment to excellence, we've expanded to meet more customer needs. Hi, Dean Stavros with Pacific Auto Body and Paint in Albany. Our new customer service center is now completed. You'll find easy access to the new drive-in estimating center. You'll find comfort in the spacious reception area, and you'll always find personal professional service. For your auto body repair and painting needs, choose the iCar Gold Class Professionals at Pacific Auto Body and Paint in Albany. Assistant Keith Gilbertson. So join me this Friday at 10.30 for Seahawks Close-Up, right here on Prime Sports. Washington, Oregon State, no score yet between these two Pac-10 rivals. Oregon State trying to put some pressure on. Looked like Washington was really going to start taking it to the goal a moment ago. The Beavers have again turned up the intensity and kicked the ball back in Washington's end. Looks like Oregon State is really having to expend a lot of energy here in the first half. Simon Date going hard, Kumernus. Dotson has been the guy that's been run all over the place as well up front. As long as they keep creating opportunities, I guess you leave them in. See how long they can last. Here's another one for Oregon State on the outside. Here's Connie, the big goal scorer. He sends the ball across. No one trailing, though. Dotson has switched to the other side of the field since Connie came in. Billy May gets to it, and he'll boot it the other way. Yeah, Connie now playing at the left side, and Josh Dotson has switched to the right. With that substitution, and Capadano obviously was the attacker that came out. Beavers have to go racing back to make a play on Boyce, but they put a lot of body on Boyce. And again, it was Jer Dotson. Now Boyce again left open on the run through. Will wait, then punches it forward, tries to outrun the defense. Jer Dotson has to take him down. Corner kick coming up, and it will be Boyce. So Boyce will take this one again. He didn't take the last corner. Go. Attack the ball, White. Attack the ball. Attack the ball. Attack the ball. He's a roller. He has to change his mind at the last second about what he saw. He's a big crowd in front of the man. And the Beavers get it out to the midfield. McCarty controls it. McCarty sends it ahead. Oh, the man slipped. Bettinger trying to get ahead on the right. Slipped on that grass. You know, there's a lot of guys in uh, stop downs when the ball's not in play really having to dig out their cleats. A lot, of, uh, a lot of guys seem to be having footing problems on this pitch. And it is a new pitch, so everybody's still getting used to this. Yeah, even the Oregon State players. Take a look where Boyce is. Just one assist away from time, the all-time career mark. And obviously, he will become the all-time leader for the end of his junior.
junior year, I mean, he will set the standard for everyone. He set a single season record last year with 13. Keep doing that, you'll be just fine. Nice ball in hand for Ian Russell. Russell trying to do something with it. And a goal kick coming up for Oregon State. Chip Conway has to like what he's seen so far. Beavers working hard to maintain the scoreless tie for the Beaver bench. Hey, Oregon State fans, you know what your favorite television show is. It's got to be Beaver territory. You see it every Wednesday at 10.30 right here on Prime Sports. Scotland and I have all the latest Beaver sports news. Check us out Wednesday at 10.30, only on Prime Sports. On the Beaver end again, OSU trying to clear it out. Deflects to the middle, though. Cardi takes a run at it, but OSU has it. Conti maintaining possession. Looks for the opening, comes down the middle. Franchino on him, gets the ball over to Date. There's Date, left side, sends it in, and again, no trailer on the right. Dodson's gonna try to run it down in the corner. He does! Josh Dodson's there, he sends it back across. No one on the left this time. Because have yet to put somebody really right in the box except for Capadano's diving header attempt early on. Here Dodson gets the ball back to Owen Glenn. Oh, come on. Tate again in the midfield, sends it ahead. Hello. Forces the Husky throw it. Less than 10 minutes remaining in the first half in a scoreless game. The division opener for both of these teams in the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation. They're on to Conti. Marked by Annis. Husky sent it the other way. Jeff Barry will track it down. Jeff Barry was the high school teammate of several of these Huskies. Shepard, Ben Shepard, we haven't seen yet. Bentry played with Bentry. And Morgan McCoy, who we will see coming off the bench defensively. Actually, I'll take that back about, back about Bentinger. Barry is part of that Woodenville Mafia of soccer. A lot of good players are coming out of there. All down to the Husky end. Nice takeaway, and the ball's pushed ahead. Boyce, boy, Boyce gets a lot of attention as soon as he touches the ball. Beaver's marking him pretty hard. When he has the ball by himself, you think he's dangerous. And you saw that in the game, that little one-on-four move. A little hip check by Annis. That'll get a whistle. By the way, that was McCoy. He was playing on the far side of the field. who just put that ball ahead. Take a look at this little slam bam. Couch way up in the air after that one, and he gets a hip check from Annis. Get whistled for boarding. Lemon Day puts this one long into the box. And the Beavers are caught offside. You know, see, that's where Conti loves to be. That's a great spot to put him. But again, he's caught behind the Washington back line. That's on goal, pretty even. Surprises that Oregon State has more. Ben Grom, a few touches he's had, shown. Interference call there. Yeah. Stepped in his way. Whistle on McCoy. Looks like he took the, uh, the worst end of that little exchange. And inside of seven minutes now, Oregon State looking maybe for a Quick goal, heading into halftime. Great chance here. Pouch and Kuban is lining it up. Freddie will take it. He's got Date in the middle. See if they try to use Date. Kuban fades right. Couch is going to take this. Headed the other way by Bettinger. Beavers knock it down. Longer that ball stays in there, better chance Oregon State has. Here it's loose again. We keep it in. That's Couch again. 
Deflected again by McCarty. McCarty's had a lot of defensive touches here. And now Washington will clear it to the other end. Ryan Edwards. Tangling with Barry. Benchino. The top. McCarty takes a big shot, and that goes long. On the goal kick for Oregon State. Now, the Beavers have done a fairly good job of choking off a lot of the Husky attack by getting all over Boyce. Here's a substitution coming up for the Beavers. Jason Kreber. True freshman right here in Corvallis. Exciting player at Crescent Valley High School. Already has three goals in just seven games played this year. He's going to replace Josh Dodson, who's done a lot of running early on. And Dodson gets a well-deserved break. Give him a little bit of breather, extra time going into that half. Prevar, one of the uh, more exciting players in the Oregon high school ranks this year, All-State. Had an ankle injury early. He's really in his best physical shape now. Played a little bit at the beginning of the year, then missed some games. And Oregon State has had the benefit of a very strong soccer program in the Corvallis area, Crescent Valley High School. And the two high schools here. Corvallis uh, currently the uh, top-ranked team of the state at the high school level. Date puts this ball deep over the line. Knocked down by Couch. Huskies will clear it out again. Huskies fall back, playing a lot of defense here in the first half, especially in the latter stages. Rowan coming up for Washington. Less than five minutes to go. Prevar got uh, caught with a fistful of jersey there on the backside. Whistle gives Washington the free kick. They teach those players young. Only a freshman, he's grabbing jersey. That's right. Teach him how to do it, not get caught. Well, it is the game within the game. There's a lot of that stuff that goes. Battles in the air there. Grome and uh, Boyce going at it. Glenn's going to come charging out of the net to grab that ball. Boy, I tell you what. Beavers are really putting bodies on Boyce. Boyce is asking for some help from the referees and really hasn't got it yet. He hasn't gotten a lot of calls. And a lot of times he's getting it away from the play, so sometimes the referee isn't seeing it. I'm going to remind them that they're floating around and they want them to know that they'll be around the next time he gets the ball. Nice move by Connie there. He's got some room. Come in from the left side, run down from behind. McCarty again, and that sets up the corner, but McCarty may have just save the goal. And Conti, nice job to flick it back to the inside, created the open space, and it was just a foot race to the finish. That ball, again, skip it a little bit as it picks up speed on the moist turf here. We'll see it again. Watch him just flick it. Flicks it on with the head, nice pushes it forward change. there, and then it just starts picking up a little speed. Connie's got a dive for it. Coming in at the end is McCarty. Knock it loose. Another substitution for the Huskies now as they bring in number 18, Richard Van Herset, giving Matt Annis a breather. So McCarty really doing the Beavers a favor, setting up that corner kick. Couch takes it from the left to the far post, headed the other way, and McCarty gets up again. Puts a head on it. Date still has it for the Beavers. Nice turn, pass to the middle. Schoen goes up after it, but it goes the other way. And Prado got the head on it that time. Boyce and marked hard. Beavers keep it in play. Wooten. Couch tries to send it ahead. Schoen get there on the run. Schoen getting together with Morgan McCoy over the line. Go kick for Washington with just two and a half minutes left in the first half. Big Scott Schoen, all six, two of them from Mission Viejo, California. Defender who always plays up and, of course, wins a lot of balls in the air with his size. Okay, one big player the Beavers have had to replace the last couple of years, Jeremy Britton, who is such a leader at the back. Schoen has done a good job using his size. Now, here's Boyce. Some room on the left. Big shot, misses wide left. Glenn did not have a play on it either, so Boyce puts that in the right spot. That's a goal. Boyce really turning it on, running through defenders. And Boyce is just simply getting too much time. They gotta really go after him and make him make a decision early here. Little room to move. Everybody's kind of saying, okay, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Well, I'm gonna take a shot. May have been just slightly deflected as it goes outside Dotson, post. Yeah, it is a corner kick. I think Dotson just got that foot on. Dotson was the guy who kind of hesitated. 
helping on defense. And in this case, Boyce does not take the corner. Lamb has to take a swat at it. Get a wrap around McCoy a little bit just to knock it loose. And the Beavers get a break in midfield, but McCarty's there again. They head it back. Chad McCarty, out of the time. Is that redhead going to make a play today? Beavers keep it in play. There's a cross from Crevar. Saved by Bill May. Final minute now, the first half. So both teams a little flurry here, trying to punch one in. You now May and Glenn start playing catch. <laughs> we'll see this opportunity again for the Beavers. Nice cross in front, but a May again, like a good goaltender should, flies in, makes the play himself. See him just cutting in front of Couch, who did have position. Oh. Three seconds oh, remaining. Boyce okay. again. Boyce. Breaks by two defenders. He beat Dodson again. Dodson takes him down from behind. In the box. Well, again, Jared Dodson has to make that play. But that's a terrible place to get caught. Just caught from behind. And Dodson losing the foot race. Tries to pull him. Maybe if he stays with him, he cuts off the angle and you let the goaltender try to make a play because the percentage is here with Washington and the penalty kick. I don't know. Tough to play that percent. Now Dotson beaten for the second time. Had to get back again with 20 seconds left in the first half. Ian Russell is going to take the penalty kick. Two goals, two assists in the season. The goal here makes such a huge difference from going into halftime at nil-nil. 20 seconds left. Land on the goal line. Beat him left. And the Huskies take a 1-0 lead, and Ian Russell makes it look easy on the penalty kick. Of course, the goalkeeper has one decision to make. Once he went to his left, the ball goes the other way. It's a 50-50 gamble, you just play it. Left lower corner. Put it right where it had to go, and once the uh, goalie commits to the right, the goalie's left. No chance. Ian Russell, his third goal of the year, and Washington has a 1-0 lead in the final seconds of the half. And we're gonna have another free kick coming up here on a yellow, I believe. Now that was a who's that couch? Pretty big swing there. We'll see who gets the card. Looks and like it is couch between couch and Russell again. And now some words exchanged, a little warning from Mr. Marshall. And with just five seconds, three seconds left in the half, the Huskies get another scoring opportunity. Dean Wurzberger. Pleading his case, and I think he'd like to see the card. Now here, the problem with the clock is that's the official time, where if you didn't have a clock at the field, it'd be up to the discretion of the referee, adding in any injury time. And in this case, it's when the buzzer goes, so does the half. So you really only have one play here. This is like a quarter kick. Boyce has to put it in. Soccer's version of the hurry-up offense. Jason Boyce will take it. Right, the left foot, he goes far post, follow up. The Beavers headed over the end line. It would be a corner kick, but I believe time has run out, and it has. No second chance for the Huskies, who nonetheless get a big goal on the penalty kick with 20 seconds left in the first half. And at halftime in Corvallis, it is the number two rated Huskies, one. The Oregon State Beavers, nil.
What's important to America's families? You can't do anything without an education these days, but how do you pay for it? That's what I worry about. And where do the candidates stand? Darlene Hooley opposes cuts in college loans and wants to maintain federal education funding. Congressman Jim Bunn voted to cut college loans by $10 billion and voted to cut billions more in education funding. When it comes to education, there is a difference. Call and find out. There is a world with no such thing as one size fits all, where there's something for everyone on the menu, and the things you want come right to you. Here, life is good, because it's easier for you to get and give the information you want from anywhere to everywhere. We've done that for you for quite some time, and we're getting better at it every day. Telephone, internet, satellite, TV. TCI. Now, there's a better way. It is halftime in Corvallis, Oregon. The Washington Huskies lead the Oregon State Beavers 1-0 in Mountain Pacific Sports Federation soccer action. And the Beavers have had plenty of opportunities to take charge in this game. Shots are dead even for the first half. And it was the Beavers taking a lot of cracks at Billy May and even getting second chances. A little crack in the Husky defense here. Yeah, that's the biggest disappointment of this early part of the game is they've had these opportunities. Scott showed off the missed shot by Josh Dotson. Just couldn't get anything by Bill May. Beavers were 20 seconds away from making it nil-nil at the break, but Jared Dotson having a lot of trouble corralling Jason Boyce, takes him down in the zone, and that means penalty kick. And that means Ian Russell going up against Olin Glenn. Glenn goes one, Russell goes two, and there it is in the left corner. The numbers from the first half, shots dead even. Three saves for Glenn, one for Bill May, corner kicks, favoring the dogs, and yes, it has been a little rough. Washington up 1-0 at the break. We've got 45 more minutes of soccer action coming your way. Don't leave the room. Hi, I'm Cheryl Teagues, host of Pathfinders Exotic Journeys. On this week's adventure, we'll travel to a desert island off the coast of Baja, California. Our guests are comedian writer Elaine Boozler and golf course architect Robert Trent Jones Jr., who will camp out on the sand, kayak along the coast, and swim with the sea lions in the Sea of Cortez. Be sure to watch Pathfinders this week in primetime and weekend mornings on this regional sports network. Live Big Sky Football on Prime Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines and Les Schwab Tires. Prime Sports brings you the ultimate insider's look at Husky football with Jim Lambright. Catch the coach every Sunday at 8 all season long. Husky football with Jim Lambright is brought to you by Cold Filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Second half set to begin, 1-0 Washington. The Beavs are changing shoes. It's got to be the shoes. They've been in a lot of trouble getting their feet on the turf and not sliding off the turf. And that's been a problem we saw from both teams in the first half. So maybe a change of the spikes will do Fred Kuminas some good and the rest of the Beavers. Now they're going to need some help. The Huskies have not given up a goal in the second half all season long. Talk about dominance. Also, Josh With a one nothing lead, there. boy, how seven, big is that goal Bavar. just before halftime? And also in the game for the Beavers. We were hoping seven. to go nil-nil with a half just because a very entertaining second half where one goal could be the difference in the game. Now it's the Beavers needing a break. And Jason Boyce and the rest of the Huskies hoping to add to the one nothing lead. And Boyce was offsides on the kickoff. I think Boyce is eager to get something going here. He's taking a lot of time to get right in the middle of things. And there he is chasing the ball down. And the uh, Beaver end of the field does his job as he forces the play to the outside. And got the ball in his hands on the throw in. There he goes. And a very good throw and He can really take it a long way with great accuracy. The Beavers deflect it, bring it out. But OSU's falling back defensively again. Washington intent to get number two. The 
Huskies who were out physical and certainly uh, held to a draw offensively would like to really assert themselves now. They feel very fortunate to have that goal before the break. And uh, another one here would certainly be insurance. And the story in a game that's nil-nil at halftime inevitably becomes a, almost a sudden death. Next goal wins. His boys would love to make a hand. Jason Boyce, school record last year, 13 assists, nine goals, gets it into the box. Sven Grom sends it the other way. Grom, very quiet today. He's playing up, not having to play as much defense. Hasn't had a lot of touches in the ball at the other end. Huskies offsides, guess not. No whistle. They're looking for a handball, and right now there's a goal. Header, and there's Joey. Franchino, I think the Beavers got caught looking around wanting that handball call, and it was kept in play by Ian Russell, who finds Franchino, and it's 2-0, and there is that big early goal. Just a minute and a half into the second half. 46-30 the time of that one. Franchino, his third goal of the year. The assist to Ian Russell, his third. Well, let's see the pickup on the play. This is after what would have been maybe a hand call. See the whist or the uh, header rather right into the back of the net. Very frustrating for the Beavers. I think they were looking for a whistle and they didn't get one. And the result is a two to nothing game. And it may have been Ryan Edwards rather than Ian Russell. I'm gonna check for the official word on that. Russell was involved on the right side, but it may have been Edwards who put the ball back. And it is Ryan Edwards will get the assist. Not Russell. Edwards, his third of the year, the junior from Fremont, California. Didn't get the start, but came on. So what a difference three minutes makes for the Beavers. 20 seconds left in the first half. They give up the first goal, and then an early goal right here in the second, and they're digging themselves a hole against the number two ranked team in the country that, as we said at the outset of this half, hasn't given up a goal in the second half all season. Boy, the two minute nightmare. First goal at 44-40, second goal at 46-30. Now Washington is in charge of this game. The scary thing is now in charge of 2-0, I think you're gonna see the Huskies actually open it up and play a little more free and easy. Get to see Boyce go to work. Misplay on that ball by Perdell. Skids out of bounds. Of course, last year, the Beavs were best in the league for goals scored. And the fewest goals in the It's all Husky, purple and gold on that stage. He's off! He's out of the Chase that down. Boomer's right behind him. It's melt from your teammates there. Turns. Capadano's back in the game. He started. Came out, back in. Taken down by McCoy. All still loose. There's Dotson. Dotson, some help from behind. Dotson still gets the shot off. Amazing That's they long. even got a shot off there because Couch and Dotson nearly collided. A little miscommunication. There should have also almost been a leave and let Couch take the shot. Instead, Dotson carried it through. A little bit of a better opportunity than what might have occurred the other way, but bottom line is the Beavers come up empty. We'll see it again. These two guys, looks like Couch was expecting a leave. Didn't get it. Dotson tries to carry through the play. One on three and the goaltender, and the ball sails wide. Washington at the other end. Bettinger gives it back to Ian Russell. Yeah, Couch would have had good momentum, too, to fire a shot. Bettinger again, lucky number 13, puts it ahead nicely. They get it right out in front. Ball put on close by Russell. Beavers, third out of danger. Beavers trying to counter here, but again, the Huskies four deep on the defense, just sitting right across the back line, and Beavers have to hold up, and they give the ball away, but a whistle will help them out there as it stops the play, and Oregon State will get it on a free kick right about midfield. Now, playing four in the back like that, when you get a lead, it is absolutely deadly. Let's talk about football, the American brand of football. This could be a shootout next week. Washington State, Oregon State, one of the great Northwest rivalries from Parker Stadium. That's just across the street from this field. You'll see it Sunday. 
right here on Prime Sports. Ball comes in close, headed out of harm's way again, offsides the call. Prideau got in there, but the Beavs were offsides. Ryan Leaf, the Cougar quarterback, together with the sensational Beaver freshman, David Moran, could be blow up the scoreboard day. McCoy will take the kick here for Washington. Dogs looking for their ninth straight win, and it is almost inexplicable that Washington lost their season opener to Seattle University in a game which they outshot the Chieftains 30 to 4. But that is what this game's like. You've got to put it in the net, and the longer you leave a game scoreless, you inevitably pay the price. McCoy's going to take this throw in. Back to Purdue. The busy Mr. McCarty sends this one ahead. There's your defensive player of the game so far for Washington, Chad McCarty. Second team all league a year ago as a freshman. In the USA under 16 and under 18 teams. He just get it back to the keeper. Shown able to use his body as a shield so Glenn can pick it up. Nice attack there. One man show by Ian Russell. Nearly got through everyone. Finally got stopped up at the end back into the hands of Olin Glenn. Russell creating a lot of opportunities in the last couple of trips down the field. Morgan State finds themselves on their heels right now and more importantly down 2-0. Come on, Race. That's it. Up. Muskies now drop back, and Morgan State will try to build out of their own end. Bit of a retreat for Eric Wooten. Get the ball now. It's Bettinger. Bettinger trying to make some space. Sends it across nicely. Header try. Won't go for Edwards. Kumanis wants the counter. Sends it ahead. He's got Dotson long, but the ball comes through, and May will make the grab. Date knocks down the kick. Washington on the right side. Ian Russell, junior out of West Seattle. Took an injury redshirt year in 1995. His name, third game of the season. Russell happy to be back in action. Well, I'll take a look at Bettinger again. Yeah, Bettinger just trying to play some time, bring it across. Just out of the reach of one of his offensive-minded players, and he was able to clear it away. It was Edwards, and that was a good move with the head. Just didn't quite get enough noggin on it. Back to live action, Kumernis back to Schoen. Schoen sends it ahead for Capadano. AP may win this race. He's chasing McCoy down. Tries to sneak from behind, but McCoy got there first. Burdell. Crap. Franchino. A big slide out of bounds. Franchino and Date coming together. I think they might get a card out of this as he uh, nearly sent one of the Huskies into the spectator section and they're a little frustrated right now. They're holding up play for just a moment while they get him out. in his little book. The book you never want to be in unless you've scored a goal. And as you see the foul list there, Oregon State has doubled up the Huskies now. Well, it's been a fairly physical game for both teams. It's a lot of whistles early in the game that kind of quieted down just a bit. And of course, the foul really created the first score of the game when Jason Boyce was taken down in the box and allowed Russell to score on the penalty kick. 20 seconds. And there's Franchino and Date getting together again. And this time, Franchino is the offender. Turnabout is fair play, apparently. And that wasn't anything more than intentional. Uh, sending messages to each other right now, and they continue to chat as they work their way back down the field. Exchanging addresses for Christmas cards later this year. 
Franchino, a very versatile player, has gone wide left. They like to have him in the middle because he's such a good possession player. We really haven't had to see him handle the ball that much today, but that is what he does well. The Beavers will take this kick out of their own end. Wooten. Jared Dotson puts it ahead. Ian Deaton, Boyce is going to track it down himself. Burns right back in the middle, intercepted by Date. Date knocks it down, tries to take a shot. But May will grab it. Looking to get the left foot on that. We talk about Boyce, who's been all over the field. We're seeing a little bit more of a defensive posture the last few minutes of this game. And another whistle over the back, and that'll benefit the Huskies. Have a nice little opportunity, just about five yards inside of the circle. Ten minutes gone on the second half. Washington scored just before halftime and just at the start of the second half for the 2-0 lead. Franchino on the run. And Skitter is right. It's grabbed by Owen Glenn. See this opportunity again by Franchino. Just gets the ball, playing the far post. Pitch seems to be drying off now. The sunshine's been going for a few hours. A little moist this morning, but taking a lot of the skip off that ball we saw maybe earlier in the game. Again, this is a brand new field. Just opened up just really just two weeks ago. And even the home beavers are getting a little used to the footing on this surface. Of course, uh, three, was it, three days ago, we just had the first serious rainfall to fall, and that sort of affects things, too. Ball's kept in play for Oregon State. Comes to the middle. Kuhlman misses one chance. Can't handle that one. Franchino sends it the other way. Washington will clear it out of their own end if Boyce can keep it in bounds. Good try, but no. I thought Jason was going to kick us the souvenir ball. Throw in coming up now for Oregon State. Simon Date right in front of his own bench. McCoy heads it out of bounds. It'll be another Beaver throw. A little closer in now. Date now letting everyone get position. Capadano, watch number five, working his way to the left. Short throw into Wooten. Wooten's going to try to send it in. Instead, retreats. Colby Britton in the game now, number 17, sophomore from Vancouver, Washington. The younger brother of Jeremy Britton, such a key member of the Babies, talking about him earlier. And in close, May is out of the net, has to run over a groom. Punches that ball out, the Huskies send it the other way. On the run, Wooten is gonna win this. I spoke too soon, Wooten can't take it from Bettinger, and now it's out of bounds. We'll take a break with 32 minutes remaining. Washington in charge, 2-0. Focus group members, how can we give this new sports network that fox at it? Let's call it the Sonic Sports Network. Longer halftime shows. Why, what big teeth do you have? There are no wrong answers here. I'd like to see George Carl go run. Sonic Rock. Home team's Fox Attitude, starting November 1st. Prime Sports becomes Fox Sports Northwest. Buying a motorhome can be a puzzle. Let Valley I-5 help you put the pieces together. See the finest selection of new and used motorhomes at one huge location. With over 500 years combined sales and service experience, the people at Valley I-5 make the difference. Claims of being biggest or best are one thing, but when it comes to customer service and RV expertise, Valley I-5 is second to none. Don't be puzzled. Stop into Valley I-5, a proud Northwest tradition. Think Valley I-5. Pac-10 football on Prime Sports is brought to you by Horizon Air and Jack in the Box. Because of time constraints, we move along to later action. It's a whole new soccer game, a 2-2 tie with less than 19 minutes to play. Hey, let's go, White, one more. Come on, White. Come on, boys. Come on, SK. Come on, 
That's the 14 minutes to play, I should say. A little difficult reading the scoreboard here in the uh, light of the afternoon. Wooten puts this ball high in the air, and it is won by May. Makes the grab. 73-36, the time of the goal by Josh Dodson from Coomerness. We are all tied up 2-2. Husky scored just before halftime on the penalty kick by Russell. Franchino, a minute and a half into the second half from Edwards, made it 2-0. And then Coomerness himself on the free kick made it 2-1, and then he assists to Dotson. We are looking uh, overtime square in the face right now. Husky substitution getting set to come in. and see the captain of the team. Kyle Godat with the next opportunity. Freddy wins that ball. He's trying to clear it out. There's Connie. Connie will leave it. And Couch sends it up the left side. Not far enough, though. Husky sends it back in. Deep. There's Ryan Edwards. Edwards in a crowd of white shirts. OSU wins it. Put out of bounds by Jer Dotson. And we'll get the substitution. Kyle Godat, the team captain, the senior from Winlock, Washington. I don't think of that as a soccer town, but in the world of Class B soccer, they are a powerhouse. Six starts this year, had four goals, five assists a year ago, and he replaces. I think it's Boyce. Boyce? And Boyce is having, looks like he's having some cramping problems. Yeah, he was stretching a little while ago out there, too. And he's doing that now on the sidelines, so. Uh, it's been a long day for him. He's been doing a lot of running. And body's just kind of giving up on him here in the last few minutes. So give him a break, and they may need him in about 11 minutes if this thing goes to extra time. Under the college rule, two 15-minute overtime periods, not sudden death. Means you can have more than one goal scored. In the OT. McCoy. Head for Washington. Little touch and go with Godat and Lawson out of bounds. Going up. Oh, the Beavers have never beaten Washington. Total of 16 games, including club team competition. Simon Date would throw in. Trying to clear it up near midfield, goes back out of bounds, throwing for Washington. He was last time out with Gonzaga in overtime. Washington has not played an overtime game this year. The Beavers have played three. One, two. Throwing coming up for the Huskies. Ten and a half minutes remaining in regulation. Bordeaux changes directions of the field now. Joel Hurd outside on the right. Check that, that's Russell. Kept in play, head forward, then back. Ryan Edwards goes back after it. Germaness sends this one long. Connie's going after it. Connie and McCarty come together. Connie keeps it in play. Dotson double team taken down in the box. Oh, the Beaver bench is hot about that. Clear to midfield by McCoy. The OSU bench was up and loud about that one. A no call they thought should have gone their way. Let's see this one more time. Dotson does, does go down hard as Conti got his little pushback. Dotson looking for some room and, you know, some contact there, obviously, but whether or not it was intentional or just bodies going the same direction, Dotson does hit the turf and get everybody out of their seat looking for the call. Now this late in a tie game, which has a little significance, you don't always see that call. I think the popular phrase is play on. State will run again. Couch. He's looking a little slow right now. I'm 
sure you're a bit deflated after letting a 2 nothing lead slip away. On the road, you've got to really buckle down. Washington certainly got the horses to do it. Here's McCoy. The Goda. Date comes together in the middle of the field with Godat. Both go down. That'll be a leader kick. Hey, Tim Lawson. Lawson, I think just an arm on the back right there puts Date to the ground. Beaver throwing coming up there. Boyce is getting some work from the trainers. They're getting some water right now. He's obviously trying to uncramp himself. Easier said than done when you've been running up and down the field all day. You are a little dehydrated, obviously. Date throws this one in. A little pinball off of Schoen. Huskies will take it the other way. This is Chris Wolf. Wolf to Godat. Godat keeps it inbounds. Chased down by Date. Date picks him clean. And Date sends it ahead for Dotson. He's got Dotson behind the defender. Dotson for the right. Run off the ball by Prudeau. They go down again. And they blow the whistle the other way. Interesting call here because I think Dotson was being held from behind and pulled down. But we'll see what... Uh, what it looks like here on the replay. Again, just a foot race between the two. Prado got back, and Prado got him hooked. Yeah, see, you can't really see that. That's hard for the official to see. It looked like Prado had an arm hook, and that's not nearly as blatant looking. In other words, good defense. Yes. So you teach these guys to play defense. So for the second time, Dots, Josh Dotson pays the price. Now, Conti with the loose ball, winds up, takes the big shot, and misses. Conti not afraid to pull the trigger with six and a half minutes remaining in regulation. Beavers trying to pepper the net as much as they can in these final few minutes of regulation, knowing that they can get one in. There's not another 30 minutes of overtime. It is almost like sudden death for the last six minutes. Now it's all on the home team side too, and that's kind of the question. Do you just play for the overtime? Are you happy to be there, or do you want to try to steal this one? And I think in this situation you go all out, but you don't want to give everything up. This is where you get beat in a counter play too. If you're Washington, you figure you've got the talent to play OT, but if you're the Beavers, you're at home, you're a little more comfortable, and maybe you like to play the overtime. I think Oregon State's looking a little more fit right now. The Beavers split. These were the first two games of the year, and then on Friday, Gonzaga went back in overtime, three to two. Another chance here for the Beavers. They'll get the throw and bring Date over to toss it into the fray. Beavers will pack in the box, hoping to get ahead on the ball, and if not ahead, a foot on the rebound. Nate's going to take quite a run at this. He's practically back in the crowd. Trying to get it into the box. A little short. Groom trying to win it. Can't do it. Dade comes right back after it. Tell you what, Simon's gone hard today. And now Groom comes up from behind, takes Godat down, and that's a beaver ball. No, looking for the other way. Linesman signal one way, referee the other. And the linesman called a throw in on the side, but I believe the referee blows the whistle for a kick. And in the case, we're gonna get a kick out of McCoy. 4.40 There's a crowd all over the place here. Got pushed down from behind. Groom, yeah, they were all over them. I mean, fairly safe call. Shown, near steal. The Huskies do appear to be playing for the overtime. And the state is taking the game to this ball sent ahead by McCarty. Chasing it down. Chris Wool. Right in the middle. Up, shot saved by Glenn. That was Tim Lawson again. Talk about Lawson being a spark. Been around the ball since he got in there. 
Huskies had a chance to win it right there. Less than four minutes remaining. Austin really had a really nice look at the net. He winds up, has all kinds of time, fires it low and hard to the corner. Glenn comes up big. Bigger saves he's had in the second half. And Boyce is back in the game for Washington. Number 11 comes back on, replacing Ryan Edwards. It definitely looked like they need Boyce in there. He's in the ball right now. Up in play by the Washington Huskies. Kyle Godin. Right up in the air, shown with the header. Loose for a moment. He just gets to it. is coming the other way. Ball ahead. Keeper May comes way out and sends it out of bounds. Throwing for Oregon State. And Husky into the field. Oregon State bench. What about OT? Thinking about a chance to win this game after falling behind 2 0. Russell boots it up the side. Boyce was a uh, little foul. Get held there. Big break for the Huskies. Well, Boyce has been asking for this. You know, he felt like he didn't get any calls early. And uh, he was being paid back handsomely. He didn't get any of the 50-50 calls in the first half. Lobbying efforts finally paying off. That's part of the game. And let the officials know. Premier player is going to draw a lot of attention. He's keeping it in now. Two minutes remaining in regulation. Fucking help us, come on! Through ball comes to me. Dotson stopped on that through ball. He thought it might be, he was going to be offside, so he held up. Gave the ball back to the Huskies. A couple of minutes left now in regulation. Beavers running out of opportunities to win this one in regulation. Washington getting everyone up now. A minute and a half remaining. For the Husky bench, Dean Morrisburg. And as we saw in the first half, you can score inside of a minute. 20 seconds left in that first half when Boyce made a move down the sidelines, resulting in the penalty kick. Boyce tumbles out of bounds. That'll be a Husky ball. Owen coming up. One minute now, left in regulation. You know Washington's gonna put the pressure on right now. Oh Van Herset throwing it in. Peters get it, Kuminis moves it the other way. Trying to break Dotson, boy Dotson and Connie are just ready to make the dash towards the goal. If somebody can get the ball out to him in the midfield. Franchino, Franchino starts to push it ahead. Shown with Kuminis. Gumernes at the center line. Ahead for Dotson. Dotson with a little bit of room. 30 seconds left. Deflected, still in play. Connie with the header. Misses Walker. Right. Connie was there. Gus could not get to the ball. And that may be the last best opportunity for Oregon State. Dotson waiting for his teammates. Sits back. Slowed it down. Fires it across. Gets the benefit of the little bounce there. And Connie had to kind of maybe retime it as he started going up for that jump. And the time is gonna wind out as the ball's booted to midfield and we are going overtime. Two very tired squads are gonna play another 30 minutes. OT coming up at Patrick Wayne Valley Stadium in Corvallis. Oregon State of Washington all tied up at two. Run, work out, practice, play. You gotta wear shoes, and Five Star Sports has the shoes. You gotta wear clothes, and Five Star Sports has the clothes. Basketball, running, cross training, aerobics, tennis, soccer. The right shoes, the right clothes. Quality, value, selection, and great service all in one place. Come in for the right stuff. Come in for the fun. Come in for a Five Star experience. Five Star Sports, 2nd in Madison, downtown Corvallis. Yes! What's important to America's families? My pension uh, is very important because it will provide a significant amount of my income when I retire. 
And where do the candidates stand? Congressman Jim Bunn voted to make it easier for corporations to raid employee pension funds. Darlene Hooley opposes that plan. She supports new safeguards to protect employee pension funds. When it comes to your pension, there is a difference. Call and find out. It's such a nice day, let's play two. Two periods of overtime after Washington and Oregon State play regulation to a 2-2 two, two tie. Now the question is, who's more fit? Here's the rule, two 15-minute overtime periods. We'll play every minute of this. This is not sudden death, so you can have more than one goal scored in the extra periods. And if it remains tied at the end of the extra periods, it will go into the record books as a tie. No shootouts. The world of soccer is yet to figure out the perfect way to end games. Be it shootouts, playing the game over again, the old traditional World Cup way. Or overtimes, be they sudden death or time. The NCAA has settled on time for now. So two 15-minute overtimes. And again, the question begs Paul Swangard, which team's more fit? Well, we talked about the depth of Washington, a team that has uh, a lot of guys on the bench they haven't gone to yet that have uh, a lot of talent. Now, whether or not they'll go to those guys, we'll just have to wait and see how this game unfolds. I think Oregon State really just happy to have gotten to this point after falling behind 2-0 early in the second half. A couple of goals, and they equalize this one up. Still looking for their first ever victory against this Washington program. Wouldn't it be nice when Washington really is at its highest point ever? Eight game winning streak, its highest ranking ever. Oh, come on. The opening that. game of very short and very important league race. Beavers substitute J.P. Capadano back into the game to begin the OT. He's been in at the start of all three periods now. He replaces Josh Dodson, who has been very active and I'm sure is a little tired right now. Kumernes. It's the ball to the middle. Oregon State is moving right to left here in the OT. Beavers are playing their second consecutive overtime game. Second one in three days. Beat Gonzaga three to two. coming up for Washington. Capadano whistled for something. Did he make contact? Yes. For the Huskies. And Ross, nice ball to the middle and headed the other way for the beat. Ian Russell put that one in. Another loose ball, and that's picked up and kicked out of harm's way by Wooten. The Beavers look a little tired in this first go around in front of the net. Bettinger went right through the traffic to try to create something on that one. Ball goes off the end line, and Oregon State trying to regroup here, not let something go in early again. Could have 25 goals scored in this game in overtime, but it still wouldn't matter until the last whistle. Corner kicks heavily in favor of the Huskies, 5-2. Boyce has taken this one, another header by Wooten. Huskies will get to do this all over again from the other point. Joel Hurd runs out there to take the corner. Hurd and Godad have been exchanging places. Hurd, a 5'7 senior of Chico, California. One's up in the air. Hands on it all the way around. Coming down for Washington. I think that is Van Hersen. Took a shot in the air. And he is down and stays down right in front of the Beaver net. That ball is high and over the goal. I'm going to have to have a stoppage here to take care of Van Herset. That was quite the traffic jam with the ball up in the air. And Van Herset's going to take a second to collect himself. I don't know if it went head to head. I got the wind knocked out of him while he was in the air. He's up hobbling a little bit. Beavers will get a kick. Bowling left takes the goal kick. 12 minutes left in the first over. One in. Dangerous situation. Couch gets it back to Glenn. And the ball's booted right into the Husky bench. Hey, hey, Josh. Hey, 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 h
Owen Glenn is taking the goalie job back. Boy, Conway keeps thinking he's bringing in someone newer and younger to challenge Owen every year. Last year was Colin McMillan. McMillan started 15 games, was the starter for six games this year, but today the fourth game in five times, Glenn has gotten the start and has played well. Beavers pushing the ball ahead. The Husky back line cuts it down. McCarty changes direction on the field. Morgan McCoy. Washington working ahead. Jason Boyce. Boyce challenged for the ball by Grome. And a throw-in coming up for Washington. Benger. Benger on the ground. Benger still fighting for it. Good trip. Will be Britain. Ball goes over the line. Goal kick for Oregon State. So the reality overtime, even though it's two 15 minutes halves, it's a little 30 minute game here. Here we go. Win this now. Coach Jimmy Kwan Conway trying to figure out a way to get this offense back in gear. One that uh, was very effective in the second half of play when they got those two goals for the equalizer. They were playing very spirited against the Washington defense. It looked good most of the game. Beavers, quite honestly, have come out a little flat here in the uh, early going of this overtime period. And Washington trying to uh, step it up themselves a notch. Had more of the opportunity so far. And that ball has been in very close to the Oregon State goal. It's always scary when it's a right, defender you're kicking the ball backwards to your keeper and you've got attackers all around you. Come on, come on, Jace. Rome off the throw in, plays catch was shown. Center the sideline and the throw in coming up now for Washington. Less than 10 minutes remaining in the first overtime. There'll be a brief break between the two overtime periods, just a couple of minutes, to allow the players to collect themselves. We've got a drink of water. Neither team has played to a tie yet this year. The Beavers are two and two here on Lorenz Field. And two and one in overtime games. Well, maybe that bodes well for the hope that somebody will win this game. Loose ball, a tough play there, and there's Bettinger and Washington leads. And a miscommunication between Glenn, who we talked about having played so well Glenn and Britton trying to make a decision, and the freshman is there. Bettinger puts Washington in front, three to two. Reese Bettinger, his eighth goal of the year. Nice job by the forward. You got to stay up on that ball. Make sure that everybody who's playing with that ball, even if you're on the defense, makes the right decision. In this case, Oregon State makes the wrong decision. They're kind of just dinking around with it. It's a miscommunication. Glenn shouldn't have put that ball back into play. He should have held on to it, and he pays the price. We'll just see how big a price he pays. Still with some time. The Beavers now will have about 23 minutes in which to get an equalizer, but again, facing the uphill battle. Now trailing three to two in this overtime, the first half of two overtime periods. Benger says, may I cut in? And he does, takes in the scores. Number eight on the year. Time of the goal was 96.02. Now both teams clearly, clearly gassed going into the OT. So it kind of was a question of who would make a mistake. I expected maybe Boyce to come out and play like Game Busters, but I would suspect with his cramping, he's a little more limited now. I haven't seen him running as hard early. But again, the beauty of the collegiate overtime is there are still 23 more minutes of game time. And Oregon State needs to find some juice. And, you know, they played well from behind in the second half, so maybe that's what they need. They, they need to play now with a little bit of abandon. They need that equalizer. Now Washington trying to look for another one. Beavers have barely got anything going on. That's kind of field here in the extra time, too. Bird gets it started. Franchino puts it in the air. This is dangerous, just over the bar and long. That's a good thing to do is take a shot at the goalie who's just made a little bit of a miscue and really make him think about what he's doing. 
One of the few mistakes for a really solid game for Glenn. Give up one goal on the penalty shot, and you can't really do much about it. You gotta give up one way or the other. The other goal, pretty legit by the Huskies, but now that third one, definitely wish he'd have that pass back. Sven Grom whistles for that foul, the Beaver freshman. The other Norwegian product. Exchange student in Albuquerque. Both of the Beavers Norwegian players, exchange students. This was Gresham. Bill May's going to take his time now. Toying with the ball before he puts it back into play. Seven minutes left in the first overtime. Loose ball. Move for Russell. He's run off the ball now by Jared Dotson down to the corner. Dotson with the slide. Puts it out. It'll be a free uh, throw. -in. And Russell will take it. They say that, they give it to Boyce. Chip away, 20 seconds on each exchange. Might as well take a little time across the clock. A lot of time, keep it in this end of the field. Lovely throw to the middle. McCoy can hit, follow up, and a nifty save by Glenn. A scary half ball. Was that Bettinger again? Yes, it was. A little half volley there by Bettinger. You'll see it come across. He was just waiting for a loose ball. It's there. Sidekick. A lot on it. But what got on it was the hands of Olin Glenn. He had to really reach back. Boy, that is a nice snag for Glenn. Erd sends that in long. That almost finds a corner. Got behind Glenn a little bit. Erd. Veteran. Trying to put it in. A lot of room for Matt Annis, who's back in. Annis to the corner. Russell turns. Glenn got a whistle for absolutely lay it out. Cow. Away from the ball. That was a golden opportunity for Russell. Dean Morsberger likes this lead. See what kind of a day Glenn's had. That's one of his best days as a Beaver. Eight saves. Only one official save for Bill May. Abadon chasing the ball. Washington, though, sends it ahead. Boots it out of bounds. Throw in for Washington. Less than five minutes remaining in the first of two overtime. 3-2 now for the Huskies. Washington trying to keep their win streak alive at nine, second longest in school history. Boyce puts this one on goal. Short left. That's not a text, it is a textbook overtime. And Washington's keeping the ball in this end of the field. Long. Washington to the side. Her kept it in bounds. I'll throw in for the Beavers. Heard Capadonna whistle. Foul coming up. The Beavers will get a kick. Now a chance for OSU to pull the offense out. Well, we're going to say it'll take some time on this one. They'll try to set something up, give themselves a chance to get all the bodies they need in the box as they start loading it in. Gumanis, of course, will take the long ball. There's the header wide left. Kylie, Kylie Couch. Couch got a head on it. A little bit behind him, but he got the header on it anyway. At least gave it a chance. Again, you redirect the ball like that, it could go anywhere. Beavers headed back into the Washington end. Gate charging after it. Little off balance, takes a tumble. Chris Wolf for the dangerous play there, got the leg up a little bit. Date goes down. Beavers still get back into play. Date still on the ground. He's gonna get a little bruise out of that. A little bump there by McCarty against Capadano, and Washington sends it ahead. Franchino trying to find Russell. 
Out of bounds, that's a Husky throw in. Simon Day, that boy, he really took it in the uh, five. There. Trying, to, trying to get that circulation going again while the Huskies continue to attack. Brettinger, double team, triple team, taken down. Give it to Oregon State. Brettinger really scrapping for it there with Couch and a couple other big defenders. Britton was back. 2.20 left. And the first of two overtimes. Away to lose it again. Hurd leads it Francino. Sliding play gets it back, and now we get a late whistle. Where's that going? Ooh, kick coming up for Washington. Francino, and I don't know who's going to take this? If it'll be Francino or Boys, but this is a great spot. The Beavers are going to put up a big wall here. About a minute and a half from him now in the first OT. Huskies looking to make it a 4-2 game. And talk about some offensive weapons to choose between for this shot. Franchino's there, Boyce. Along with Russell. Leave it. Boyce takes it left, going right for the post, and the save by Glenn, and that was very close. That's a well-placed ball by Boyce. Yeah, Glenn, I think, saw that all the way, got it down low, put the hands on it first, let it come to him, but eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and Left Boyce foot, yeah. is the one that puts it through. Nice curl on the ball as well, and for that lower corner. Now Glenn, Glenn knew what he was defending. He knew the left foot. It was headed that way. Final minute now, first over. Brief break and then 15 more minutes of action. Boomer is tied up with McCarty. Unfortunately, uh, Simon Date really running out of gas here for the Beavers. He uh, doesn't have much left. He needs a break. Well, we got a couple of minutes here, but that's going to be up at Simon now, not at full speed. He has really gone hard today, played both ends of the field. You can tell he's got the dirtiest uniform out there. Final 10 seconds now of the first overtime. And we will not get the ball back into play. So a little bit of rest for the weary. The Huskies have taken the early lead in the first of two overtime periods. 15 minutes of action left. We promise. Washington 3, Oregon State 2. I'm in the wrench. Okay, let's take it out. Watch the hoses. I need some help here. We're losing her. Cables. Clear. Yeah. Independent Bug Works. We've been doctoring your Volkswagen for 25 years. There's a world where you are very well known. You don't need a name tag. And everything you want is brought to your front door. Here, life is good. Because it's easier for you to get and give the information you want from anywhere to everywhere. We've done that for you for quite some time, and we're getting better at it every day. TV, telephone, internet, satellite, TCI. Now, there's a better way. It doesn't get any longer than this in the college game. We go to the second of two 15-minute overtimes. Washington with a big goal fairly early in the first OT to take a 3-2 to two lead. Miscommunication in the Oregon State end set up Bettinger. That's right. Olin Glenn trying to put it back to his fullback. Decided that was, in hindsight, a bad decision as Bettinger is there for his eighth tally of the year in his freshman season. The freshman out of Bellevue, as we talked to at the outset of this game, has been a, a big boost for the Washington offense and right now is the big star of this game having the one goal put the Huskies on top three to two. Now 15 minutes left both teams rather tired I would say. Gentleman Simon Date during the first overtime he is playing a little ragged right now. 
And the Beavers are really going to have to summon up some energy to push the ball in because Washington's kept the ball in the Oregon State end of the field for uh, all of really the majority of the overtime so far. The offsides call is Bettinger hanging deep in the Beaver end. Just didn't have anybody around him. Can't do that. Beavers will try to attack here from the back line. Eric Wooten puts it in play, the senior transfer. Four-year starter, the first three at Point Loma. Loose ball and a uh, quick shot. Hooks over the net. Jason Prevar, who is more than capable of bearing the shot from out there. Prevar with a tough angle, let it uh, slide over to his right foot. Moment of the ball carrying it out wide. We'll see the uh, shot again, just kind of a nice little head back there. Comes up in front, right-footed shot high and wide. Another whistle here, and another advantage for Washington. Yeah, if you're in Oregon State situation right now, you've got to take advantage and take that shot. Even though you haven't settled it, you don't have a perfect touch on the ball. Bull kick coming up for Oregon State. The Beavers trying to, trying to get a little energy right now. The crowd, as they came out from the last time out, the crowd really on their feet trying to rally them. So some good support by the home fans. Now the Beavers trying to hustle down a little faster here. They were saving it up a little bit in the first OT, and now that you're down by a goal, you're going to really put the push on. Dodson is back in the game. Dodson turns. Big shot from the outside, and May has to reach for that. Boy, Josh Dodson got a lot of zip on that, considering he's turning and shooting from long distance. Yeah, tough shot. He got some opening thanks to a little slip by the defender. Gave him some time, brought it across, but May was there. But that's what the Beavers need to do more of here in the last 12 minutes of this second overtime. Capadano is now on the loose, right to the keeper. Capadano is putting defense, the Husky defense showing a couple of cracks. Fatigue, I'm sure, is big an issue if you're wearing purple as if you're wearing white. Well, we saw their star, Jason Boyce, earlier, or one of their many stars, suffering from a little cramping. He seems to have gotten his intake of water, stretched himself out, and has been in there for first 20 minutes or so of this overtime. Schoen is sitting out the second overtime for the state. Offsides the call. Beaver's complaining that he didn't let the linesman call it. It was the referee who called that. Wurzberger, of course, agreeing with the call. Washington sends the ball ahead. Now he's set up for her left side. Wins the race, centers it up. There's Boyce. There's Russell. Puts it back in. Boyce can't get a foot on it. Save is made by Glenn. And Glenn will try to attack it back the other way, looking for Dotson. Nice little kick. Doesn't get it outside. It looks as though maybe Boyce got a little piece of that one up in front, but again, just not enough to get anything on it. He's caught offsides there. Well, that was close. Uh, may have got the benefit of the Beavers calling the offside. Everybody uh, looking to the linesman, holding up their arm. So all that lobbying maybe by voice didn't work. <laughs> that just draws the official attention. I'm starting to grow short now for Oregon State. 10-40 left. Second overtime. of a handball there, inadvertent though. Huskies clear it out. And another offside call, this time the other one. Again, that's Washington holding that back line up. Really makes it difficult. State soccer band across the way. Belting out the hits. <laughs> I don't know so to speak. Yeah. 
Couch taking a chance there, moving up. Lost the ball, but gets it back. Davis get a little touch on the ball now. Kubernetes change sides. And he hit Dodson across the middle. Boy got the first head on it, but it bounces loose where Dodson has some room to work. He'll stop. Look for some help. He'll go to Date in the middle. Simon comes back to the left. In the air. Big collision there. Wolf came together with, who's that, Britain. Ball comes the other way. For Washington as they continue to try to kill the clock. And even if they were slow in the first overtime, they're really going to take their time here in the last nine minutes. And you can really see it on the field now. A lot more standing around by both teams. They're just kind of waiting for something to develop and then put the energy into it. Now, this is a game where you absolutely have to be able to run. Continuous. It's kind of like treading water, the running you do in soccer. You try not to expand energy except when you absolutely have to. Ball comes across. Hurd will center it up. Royce turns, hands on that. Follow up by Wolf, headed the other way. Dotson looking for a through ball. Chance there. Dotson's going to be in front. McCoy cut him off, though. It's still loose. Dotson can get after it. McCoy takes it right back the other way. And Huskies thinking through ball here. Hurd puts it out front. Bettinger signing And the defense center it up. There's Boyce, knock it down, deflection at the post, and not quite tipping material for Ian Russell. The Huskies relentless, getting that extra touch on the ball and almost put in the insurance goal. A nice movement by Glenn. He got into the goal at the end there to try to stop it from going to the net, but all started by Bettinger. Gets it in front. A few tips there and there, as you see, just kind of bouncing all over the place. And watch Glenn, he ends up in the goal. Fortunately for the Beavers, the ball ends out outside. Good work by Russell to get the second touch on it, too. Just a little too far over the goal. He might have been able to chip it over. He hadn't been so tight. Dotson held a little bit there, but no whistle. The Beavers get the ball back in the Husky, and they're running out of chances. Seven minutes left now in regular in uh, the overtimes. And May will boot it away. Beavers and Huskies both have trips to the Bay Area to look ahead to next weekend. And then single home conference games, uh, division games against Sacramento State, and that will be the extent of the divisional play. A push whistle. Dave just had his hands up a little bit too much. That'll get you a whistle most every time. And the Huskies in no hurry now to develop much of an offense. They would like to see the ball stay in the Beavers' end as much as possible. Beavers here will try to counter quickly. Look for the open man, and they have him. Capitano. Dotson, left side. Chip it to the left. Very good chance for Dotson. Again, he's got the speed. That's not for want of trying, but Dotson has not had shots today. He used his speed very well. Could end up getting the equalizer in this game. This time he gets the through. Starting to be a chase. He, and he got an open shot at it. Ball maybe just took a little skip at the end there. Got high on his foot, high and wide. He wins a lot more of those races than he loses. Dotson, number six in the all-time OSU scoring list. That's a list that includes guys like Chris Scotty, machines. Washington will get this throwing now, but the ball's back in the OSU and now just five and a half minutes left in OT. Boys look like he's directing traffic. Herb, right in the middle, lost the ball to Kumernis. Head to date, oh, hit him in the heel. Frustration for Simon Day. Wolf takes the quick shot. This is wide left. Goal kick for Oregon State. Beavers will hustle it down now. Five minutes left in the second overtime. Here we go, Simon. 
Everybody gets back, at least to midfield. Glenn's going to put this one into play. Booms it. Date with the header, gets it ahead. Dodson now. Dodson sends it to Cappadano, right side. Lost it to McCoy. Challenged by Grohl. McCoy's going to keep it, though. McCoy to midfield. Britton's going to track it down, get it across to Olin Glenn. Glenn puts it high in the air. One by the Beavers. Date ahead briefly, knocked back the other way in between the benches. Four minutes now remaining in the second overtime. Beavers running out of opportunities, need to push forward here. Actually, have about 20 more yards if they want it, but they throw it in way back at the half line. I don't know if they realize where the ball went out. They just wanted to get it back into play as quick as possible. Date. Get it up. Brevar. Brevar sends this one in. Snagged by May. Had a couple other players going to the net. Lucked instead just to right to put it on there. May's not going to let too many more goals go in. Averages uh, less than a goal a game giving up. He, .68 goals against average is led in the couple of today. Now Dean Worsberger knew this was going to be a tough game today because it's your rival and it's conference play and that prediction has come true. Washington hanging on to a 3-2 lead in overtime. Beavers on the run. Dotson leaves it behind. Husky sent it the other way. Beavers set up an extra defender, and now they're getting caught on the backside. Russell saved by Glenn. Russell keeps it in play. There's Boyce, and there's the insurance goal. And again, Ian Russell working hard, stays with it, gets the second chance where that ball could have easily rolled over the end line, and he sets up Jason Boyce for his fourth goal of the year, and Washington up two will win this game. And the those smiles, uh, definitely smiles of relief as Washington had this game in hand early in the second half. The Beavers came back with a flurry and now Boyce has kind of put the nail in the coffin as it were as uh, he finally gets one. Did help set up a goal earlier in the game thanks to a penalty as he was taken down for the first goal of the game late in the first half. But a very impressive player in Jason Boyce. And the junior finally gets on the scoreboard and gives Washington that 4-2 advantage that will more than likely hold up. Boyce put himself in a position when Russell made the big play to keep it. Well, the smart thing he did there was he simply just waited. Didn't try to get active in the play, which kind of was getting a little scrappy towards the end line. Waited for a ball to come loose. He was at the perfect place at the right time and just had a lot of net to fire on. Time of the goal, 117th minute, 117.08. Have we been there this long? Yes, we have. Boyce from Russell. Certainly an entertaining contest by both teams. Oregon State showing the resiliency to come back. Washington, Washington ranked second of the nation, having that to deal with. I mean, this is a team that hasn't been ranked this high ever now, having to deal with people coming in and playing them being their big game for a lot of teams all season. They'll be looking forward to playing the Huskies next week. Next week will be like that. We go to the Bay Area, you know, Stanford and Cal are going to be up for it. But it'll be very interesting. The Huskies have had limited success in postseason. One postseason victory under Wurzberger. Made it to the second round in 1992 before they lost to Indiana. 95, the Huskies got in but lost their first round game to the University of Portland. And now Washington working on a nine-game winning streak. Longest winning streak since 1984 when they won 11 straight. Bird is open from the left side. Big play there. Drew Dotson gets back to take it away and takes Hurd down. Crowd likes the action. Yeah, Hurd looked like he went down in agony. Now he's up bouncing around like nothing ever occurred. A minute and a half now remaining in this one. Huskies control the loose ball. Again, both these teams go to the Bay Area next. And then the final home games of the division play, and pretty important ones with Sacramento State coming up. 
Go to the ball, not away from it. The Beavers will host Sac State in the 18th. The Huskies get them in the 20th. There's Papadano outside. On the right, sends it across. Header, loose in front, and cleared away. Crevar trying for the header. With just 50 seconds left now. Pop it up. You know what, the Beavers haven't quit in this one. They want to get one more. Capadano again sends it across. The trailer can't get a foot on it. Washington gets it away again. Some tired boys both ways. Kylie Couch got that out of heart. Kylie Couch was the player who couldn't quite uh, connect on the shot. Think they'll be able to sleep in on the bus trip back to Seattle. As long as the bus driver isn't tired after watching <laughs> this one. Final 10 seconds now will be counted off. Eight, seven, six, Booted away five, to midfield four, by May. Wurzberger over to shake four, hands with Jim Conway. And a loose ball, that goes into the goal as time runs out, but that should be a no goal. And it is. So the final numbers up on the board, a hard fought game for these two Northwest rivals. The Washington Huskies have won nine in a row and they win their division opener. The final score, UW four, Oregon State two in overtime. We'll be back to wrap this one up. From the Big 12, Conference USA, the Big Sky, and the Pac-10. Plus 41 full game replays of the Northwest Fabulous Four. Prime Sports, more college football in 13 weeks than some people can take. Well, it was a hard day's night, but the Huskies prevail for their ninth consecutive win, beating Oregon State in overtime 4-2. You know what? These two teams put on such a good show. We're going to put them on TV again. The rematch in Seattle. You'll see it Monday, November 4th at 7 p.m. right here on Prime Sports. For my broadcast partner, Paul Swangard, this is Bob Akamian. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for sticking around. You saw some great college soccer action. The Huskies keep the streak alive. 4-2 to the final. So long from Corvallis. Prime Sports. We play the Northwest. We'll coach the team's final three games this season, and the resignation will be effective when a new coach is hired. Purdue is two and six this season, and since Coletto took over in 1990, the Boilermakers are powder bumps. Sun Pathfinder presents Warren Miller's Snow Riders. Coming November 7th through the 22nd, everybody attending receives a free lift ticket to White Pass. Tickets available to Ticketmaster in the theater box offices.
It has the most powerful gas and diesel engines of any full-size pickup. It has the most available payload and towing. It has the roomiest cab of all and better resale value than Ford, Chevy, or GMC. It's the truck that wrote a whole new rule book, now available in a leather-bound edition. Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. See the friendly Northwest Dodge dealer near you. I'm Doug Smith. I'm concerned about the future. I'm running for the state Supreme Court because there's a need for change on position number three. For over 30 years, I've been a strong advocate for the protection of individual rights. I'm Doug Smith. I'm running for the Supreme Court because there's a need for change in position number three. I believe that violent criminals belong behind bars. On Fox NFL Sunday, America's number one pregame show looks at our power-packed doubleheader, including Dallas versus San Francisco. A lot of brave men have a lot of trouble with the 49ers. But first, two Super Bowl contenders collide as Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers battle the Kansas City Chiefs. Then, it's the game you've been waiting for as Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin, and the Cowboys take on Rice and the Niners. It's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Don't let the magic pass you by Don't lose the greatest moment Joan, look at this. Don't anybody move. I'll be right back. I think you've finally done it. All right, everybody. Smile. Don't let, Don't let life's magic moments pass you by. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Coverage with an attitude. You're watching Fox Sports News. Fox Sports Northwest hits the court with a Big 12 matchup. The Lady Baylor Bears are fighting their way through the net because they're taking on the Wildcats of Kansas State. Something at one on the all-new Fox Sports Northwest. As we return to Fox Sports News, you can see why Utah has been so successful in recent years. It's because their main guns show up to work. John Stockton is number one in the league with 529 consecutive starts. The mailman, Carl Malone, is number two with 387. All right, James, uh, clue us in on what to look for in the Jazz Rockets matchup. Well, we're going to look to see who's going to stop Hakeem Olajuwon. It's a sad day when the only thing you have to throw at him is off the tag. Otherwise, they're going to bring in an Antoine Carr, who's a proven veteran, great defender in the middle. All right, Craig, what about the situation in Philadelphia? Who's picking up the slack with Eric Lindros out? Well, obviously, offensively, it's a big loss having the big 88 out. Dale Howardchuk is the natural choice. He struggled early. He got his first point tonight in the game. Uh, but the big guys are John LeClaire and uh, Mikel Renberg. Those are the two guys who are going to have to step up on the wings and look for Rod Brindamore. This is the hardest working player in the league to come up and be a big factor in the center. All right, Craig, thanks. We've got much more to tell you about, and we'll get to that as Fox Sports News rolls on. Tonight on Pueblo 81009, Alexa sends her name and address to new catalog Pueblo, Colorado 81009 for a free listing of federal consumer publications. From the beginning, Miller Genuine Draft is a beer unlike any other. Uniquely cold filtered for maximum refreshment. Brewed with specially selected grains, the finest malted barley, and only the choicest hops the Northwest has to offer. Miller Genuine Draft. Always smooth, always refreshing, beginning to end. Cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft. How the Northwest stays cool. Buying a motorhome can be a puzzle. Let Valley I-5 help you put the pieces together. Save thousands at Valley I-5 with low everyday pricing year-round on both new and used motorhomes. At Valley I-5, find the RV that fits your lifestyle, your pocketbook, and your dreams. Totally committed to RVers, Valley I-5 is truly unequaled in customer service and RV expertise. Valley I-5 in Kent, a proud Northwest tradition. Think Valley I-5. 
on Fox NFL Sunday, America's number one pregame show looks at our power pack doubleheader, including Dallas versus San Francisco. A lot of brave men have a lot of trouble with the 49ers. But first, two Super Bowl contenders collide as Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers battle the Kansas City Chiefs. Then, it's the game you've been waiting for as Troy Aikman, Michael Urban, and the Cowboys take on Rice and the Niners. It's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Why is soccer the most popular game in the world? Yeah! Oregon State takes on Washington tonight at 7 on Fox Sports Northwest. Home team, Fox Attitude. You're watching Fox Sports News. From the North Creek Complex in Bothell, Fox Sports Northwest brings you collegiate soccer. Today, the third-ranked University of Washington Huskies entertain their Northwest rivals, the Oregon State University Beavers. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd Pickett, along with Alan Hinton. Welcome to our final telecast of Husky men's soccer on Fox Sports Northwest. Another big game for the Huskies. They're second against Oregon State this year. They won in overtime in Corvallis. But an important contest for both teams today, Alan. The Beavers would like to finish the season with a 500 mark. The Huskies want to take another step toward locking up an NCAA home playoff berth. Well, it's a, it's a big game for both teams. It's, it's the finish for uh, Oregon State. Uh, they've had a very good year this year. Uh, they almost beat the Huskies uh, uh, in Oregon earlier on this year. They lost in overtime. having had a great chance to have won that game in the very last minute of regulation time. So they want to get their own back today. Huskies want to keep their winning record going. They've had a great season so far. They want to lock up the number one position in the NCAA playoffs and uh, continue their run. And when you're running and you're winning, then it continues, doesn't it? Everything goes well. Let's take a look at the Soccer America rankings, and you can see where Washington stands right now, ranked number three in that Soccer America poll. And a victory today, as we said, would help them to solidify a home playoff berth, which would be a first for this program. Well, it's a program that's uh, improved uh, uh, all from the very beginning of time when they started the program all those years ago. But Dean's come in and brought that professionalism to it. They deserve to have the home field advantage. Home field advantage is a big deal in the playoffs, and teams love to play at home. It's much tougher to win on the road, so maybe it's the year for the Huskies. Let's hope it is. Today's contest features the top two scorers in the Mountain Division of the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation. First off for Oregon State, Josh Dodson, who's having a great season. Well, Josh, he's a, he's, a, he's a fighty type of forward player. He'll be putting the Huskies defense under pressure today. He's already got uh, 10 goals so far this year and loves to play and loves to win. And uh, he wants to go out with a bang against a very good Huskies team. And, Alan, another concern is that Oregon State is very good at taking restarts. Well, Jimmy Conway's an old winger, same as I used to be, and uh, we love set plays because we've taken hundreds of corners in our career. Jimmy's worked hard on their set plays, and uh, Dean is a bit concerned about the uh, uh, Oregon State's uh, very good set plays. Now for Washington, Jason Boyce, who is the Huskies' career assist record holder, set that mark earlier during the season, one of the spark plugs of a very talented Washington offense. Well, Jason Boyce is one of the best college players in America today, and he's got great speed, he gets goals, he runs by defenders, he, and, and more importantly at times for uh, sometimes uh, strikers that could self, uh, call selfish players, he creates opportunities for, the, for his other team, and that's why you see him having so many assists. But on top of that, he takes good long throw-ins, and uh, he, he loves to score, and you'll see his enthusiasm if he scores today. His smile is worth a uh, million words. And he tallied the final goal in that 4-2 overtime victory for Washington. You saw it right there. As the Huskies had a 2-0 lead, the Beavers came back, and Washington won it in overtime. Washington has never lost to Oregon State in men's soccer. Will the streak continue today? We'll be back with the starting lineups, the Beavers and the Huskies. Come your way next on Fox Sports Northwest. What makes this Dodge Caravan such a value is our family value package. For no extra charge, you get seven passenger seating, security drawer, air conditioning, and more. Plus, you also get seats that roll, cup holders, and storage spaces, even a great stereo. All for just $17,815. But what makes this family value package so valuable is where you'll find it. In America's best-selling minivan, Dodge Caravan. See the friendly Northwest Dodge dealer near you. I'm Doug Smith. I'm concerned about the future. I'm running for the state Supreme Court because there's a need for change on position number three. For over 30 years, I've been a strong advocate for the protection of individual rights. I'm Doug Smith. I'm running for the Supreme Court because there's a need for change in position number three. I believe that violent criminals belong behind bars.
It was one of the darkest days in Washington state. The Lowry billion dollar tax hike threatened every family, every small business, every community. We thought the Washington legislature was our last line of defense. That was before majority Democrats in the legislature rubber stamped Lowry's tax express. Now they're running to do it to you again. It's time to give Washington State Republicans the ball, because they're the only ones standing between them and your money. Washington State Republicans, getting the job done. City of Hope. Join us in touching the lives of millions. Call 1-800-260-HOPE. And we welcome you back to the North Creek Complex in Bothell as we get set for our contest between Oregon State and Washington. Take a look at these starting lineups. The front three for Oregon State, Dominic Connie, Josh Dodson, their leading scorer, and Jeff Berry. In the midfield is Frederick Kuberness, Simon Date, and Kylie Couch. Sven Grum, Eric Wooten, Jared Dodson, and Scott Schoen across the back. And in the nets for Oregon State, Ulan Glenn, a senior from Park City, Utah, went to uh, Mountain View High School in Bend, Oregon, and has a 1.68 goals against average going into the game. For Washington, across the front, Lawson, Voice, and the freshman who's had a tremendous campaign, Reese Bettinger. Midfield, Franchino, Russell, Wolf, and Annis. Perdo, McCarty, and Van Herset. And in the Nets for Washington again is the junior, Bill May. He's played 79% of the minutes in goal for Washington this year. Has an 0.65 goals against average, six shutouts. As you get a quick look at Dean Wurzberger in his fifth year as the head coach of the Washington Huskies. The series between these two teams in favor of Washington, 15 wins, no losses, and two ties. And as we mentioned on October 6th, it was 4-2 in overtime in favor of Washington as Boyce is brought down the first foul of the game. Brian Hall is our official. Vince Velli and Mac Pinsky, the assistant referees. There's a look at our officiating crew again. Boyce set to take the restart here for Washington. Breezy day off the foot of Bettinger, tried to play it with the outside of the boot, and a very good start there. Allen, a great start for uh, Washington as they nearly got the deflection early from Bettinger. I think you're going to see them a lot today. Uh, Jason Boyce to Reese Bettinger, two big time players who have had a great year for the Huskies and uh, uh, clearly enjoyed playing together. They, they both got great confidence and uh, they'll be looking for each other a lot today. They play very well together. Bit of a breeze as well. It's at the bas back of the uh, Huskies as Washington's called for the foul. Oregon State will have the ball on the restart. Keep it 12. Kubernetes restarting for the Beavers. Played into the box for Oregon State by Simon Dayton. Hammered out of bounds by Franchino. play this one in the box. Big rangy keeper. Yeah, one of the things that uh, Dean Woodberg has had to do today is uh, to make a tactical change. He's playing uh, Joe Francino at left full back because uh, Morgan McCoy is injured. And on top of that, Joe Hurd is as a hamstring, so he's not playing today. So Joe Francino is a very, very effective midfield player. He's playing left full back today. So uh, uh, 
the downside is that, that they will miss him in the midfield, but then uh, Joey can get down the left side uh, uh, with his speed and his, uh, his dribbling ability. Oregon State whistled for an offside on the restart. Washington trying to counter a bit here. Long ball for Boyce. Nicely touched away from him. Good play defensively there by Scott Schoen. Boyce continuing to battle. Draws a couple of defenders now. And it goes into touch off of Jeff Berry. A quick throw in for Boyce. Boyce waiting for players to get into position. Flicked out to the top of the box. Franchino first to the ball. Tries to play it back in. It's deflected by Barry, and it'll be a corner to Washington. Some pretty good early pressure here by Washington offensively, Alan. Well, what's happening? Uh, Jimmy Conway of uh, Oregon State, he's trying to put pressure on the uh, uh, Huskies' defense, and, of course, uh, the Huskies won't allow him to do that, so the Huskies are pushing forward well here. Good throw in. Now a corner kick, and, of course, the Huskies, are, but both teams are very uh, uh, good on set plays. Russell taking this corner, and it's deflected out of bounds uh, by Dominic Conti, so Washington will have it again. Well, Ian Russell takes good corner kicks, and he's just trying to get the ball over the, the near post. Uh, the, the guy at the near side that's trying to uh, block the kick being driven in past. Nice volley there on the little half touch. Coming in was Matt Annis, who scored a low-line drive goal against UCLA in very similar fashion. This left footer goes high. Matt Annis has got good faith. He scored a great goal against UCLA on the right side, uh, smacked it in the far post uh, to give the Huskies a great 3-1 uh, uh, victory against a very good UCLA team, and he'll be looking to get shots from the midfield today. Difficult ball, and he really played it very well on that half volley. He, he did well, really. It wasn't an easy shot to hit, but he, he, he wants to get some shots off, and, uh, and, he, and he means uh, uh, business today. Bettinger flicking on for Boyce. He's marked by Schoen. Just enough pressure to not be able to get a full swing at the ball. There a look again at Boyce, the junior. Shares the lead with three game-winning goals with uh, McCoy, the player Allen mentioned, who's injured. Broke up part of the Woodenville reunion between these two teams. There's a handful of Woodenville players, all former teammates. Russell on the far side. That's an area that Washington really wants to try to exploit a little bit today, Alan. It's the wide midfield position. I think they'll be looking, well, they've got a lot of speed. I mean, Ian Russell down the right side for Washington. He's very fast. And of course, down the left side here, Jason Boyce and Joey Fancino now coming in behind him. Lots of speed on the field uh, uh, from both teams. Washington marking solidly at the back again. Prudeau bringing the ball out from under pressure, and then he's fouled from behind. I talked with uh, Morgan McCord before the game, and he's very, very disappointed that he can't start in this game. He's a freshman from Woodenville, as you just mentioned. He's got uh, three game-winning uh, goals already this year, and uh, he had an injury, an ankle injury, on, uh, on Friday in the Husky win against uh, St. Mary's from California. But uh, he, uh, Dean will use uh, Morgan if necessary. Uh, so he is available to play, but uh, isn't starting, of course, in the very ankle. 